بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to our series on the Quranic journey and we are continuing on our discussions with Surah Al-Baqarah We introduced Surah Al-Baqarah in our previous session and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah Al-Baqarah by confirming that this book is the one which has no doubt in it whatsoever and it is a guidance for the people of Taqwa Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to speak about some of the characteristics of the people of Taqwa that they are those who believe in the unseen they establish the prayer they give from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them and that they believe in what has been revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and what has revealed what has been revealed to the messengers before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and that they have yaqeen they have certainty in the akhirah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is the pinnacle of success they are the ones who are guided and they are the ones who are of success now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to speak in the next 15 or so verses about two other characteristics of people and it's important to remember that just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the characteristics of good people and people of excellence and people of success and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also will speak about the people of uh, who are not successful the people who will attain the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people who are not sincere in their religion and so it's important for us to reflect on both of them for the good that we inculcate those realities and for the bad that we ensure that those realities are not found within ourselves so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he begins أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون Indeed those who disbelieve it is the same upon them whether you try to warn them or you do not warn them لا يؤمنون So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the next characteristic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to speak about or the next type of people is those who disbelieve and this word kufr has two meanings it has the meaning first and foremost to disbelieve and it's important for us to remember that we do not just call anybody a kafir rather a person a, a disbeliever a kafir is somebody who the message has come to them they understand what the message is saying and then they reject that message that is what we understand as a kafir it's a technical term but also kufr has the meaning of being ungrateful like kufran or ni'man someone is ungrateful for the blessings that have been bestowed and it's important to remember that just as a person can be uh, just as a person can fall into this trap of disbelief when a person is ungrateful that can also lead to that and so it's important that we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that he's bestowed upon us and do we not we not found that we do not find ourselves in the trap where the messages come to us and we do not accept it Okay, we should accept it wholeheartedly. Allah is saying these people, they have gone to such a level that If you try to warn them or if you don't warn them, it will have no effect upon them. They will not believe. Meaning they have got to such a stage that disbelief has gone to such a stage that it will make no effect upon them. Okay, and the ulama will say that this tends towards people who where it's gone too far, like the likes of Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, these people who are staunch enemies of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in his lifetime. It was too late for them, but you tried to warn them or you left them, they were not going to believe. Okay, and so Allah subhanahu wa taala then speaks about the natija of these people. He says, "Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sami'ihim." وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم. So Allah says that He has closed, He put a khatam, okay, He's put a seal upon their hearts. Okay, khatam Allah ala qulubim that He's put a seal upon their hearts. وعلى سمعهم and upon their hearing. وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة and upon their sight is a a cover, a veil. ولهم عذاب عظيم and to them belongs a severe punishment, a great punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now has explained the natija. This is now the result of these people as a result of their um, disbelief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a seal upon their hearts. And this is important because the heart is the epicenter of the soul. Ultimately, we are, when we die, what is the thing that is uh, going to be released from our body? It's our soul. 
Okay, we are made up of body and we're made up of soul. So when we die, the soul will leave the body, and that soul, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He says that you know they ask you about the soul, say that it is from the commands of Allah. So we do not know in totality about the reality of the soul, but what we do know is that this soul is a part of us, and it will be that which will be judged. Okay, the body itself is just a vehicle for the soul, and the epicenter of that soul is the heart itself and the nature of the heart that will affect the soul as a whole that's very important and so our actions our behavior the way we conduct ourselves that is going to have an impact upon our heart okay, so if a person continues to sin it has an impact upon the heart and that impact will then affect the soul in the life to come meaning it will result in punishment we ask Allah for safety and security so Allah subhanahu is saying here those who disbelieve they've got to such a stage you try to warn them you don't try to warn them they will not believe then as a result of that Allah seals their hearts it's too late for them and Allah says then وَعَلَى سَمْعِهِمْ and he also puts a seal upon their hearing so now when a person's heart is closed then their hearing is closed meaning whatever they're listening to it has no impact and that's something that's interesting. Sometimes we might find this with our family members, for example, that we try to kind of tell them about Islam or we try to encourage them towards good. They don't want to hear it. No, don't talk to me about it. Oh, no, you know, you're going a bit too religious. I'm not interested. And sometimes, you know, we can take a lesson from this. I'm not saying those people are disbelievers, but when a person, like, they don't even want to hear anything, you try to play Quran or you try to tell them about Islam or you try to say, you know, I listen to this in a talk or you should listen to it, and they're not having it. I don't want to. They don't want to hear it, and this is part of that. Okay, and that, that has an impact upon. Uh, it's, it's a result of the state of the heart. Allah then says, He seals their heart. He seals their their, their hearing, and then wa absarihim ghishawa. And upon their eyesight is a veil. It is a cover. And what does this mean? So when the Prophet sallallahu has received the revelation, he then recites the revelation. And in order to receive the revelation, there's two things. First of all, it's the state of heart, meaning your heart has to be ready to accept something. If somebody comes with a new proposition, say, look, I've got an idea for you. If that person comes and you're like, okay, I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to speak to you. Okay, like your heart is like, don't, don't even get close to me. Then you're not even going to be willing to entertain whatever he's got to say. So first, the heart has to be softened. The heart has to be willing to listen. Okay, then what happens? The Prophet ﷺ will recite. Okay, remember there's no books then in, in the time of the Messenger of Allah. There is just recital. They're an oral nation. So now he's listening. Okay, the person's listening. So the ears, that's why that's mentioned now. Okay, the listening. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? What is the Messenger of Allah? What is this message that he's come with? Okay, and then after that, once you listen, then you see, okay, what does this mean for me? What does this mean for me in, in my actions? What does this mean for me in my behavior? What does this mean for me in my character? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by mentioning heart, then hearing, then eyesight, there's an indication here of the approach that we have to the Qur'an. That the first thing that we have to do in order for us to under, engage in the Qur'an and invite ourselves to the banquet of the Qur'an is to have a softened heart. A heart that is not arrogant. A heart that has to remember, I need to be guided. I'm going to die one day. I need to, you know, make sure that I have enough deeds to be successful in the Qiyamah. I need to do, I, I need to work hard. That has to come from the heart. And then when that comes from the heart, then now I'm going to listen. Now I'm going to see what is Allah saying to me? What are these verses? What What is the messenger of Allah that some come with? And then once that has been established, now I must open my eyes. Where am I going in my life? What am I doing? What is Allah? What have I just listened to? How does that impact me in my life now? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying with regards to these people, these disbelievers, their hearts are sealed, their hearing is sealed, and then a veil is put on, on, upon them. So they don't, they don't even see where they're going now. Literally, they don't know where they're going in life. And sometimes we see this nowadays. The people, due to you know whatever kind of um, a lack of faith, some people who are you know, non-believers, they have no perspective in life. Tribulations come, they don't know where they've come from. And they don't know where to go. We have faith. That's the big blessing of faith. We have a heart. 
Okay, the, the iman within it. We have a he hearing to hear what Allah is saying to us. We have eyesight to have focus and, and, and understanding of where we are going in our life. Okay. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And to them is a, is a great punishment. Allah subhanahu wa says, a great punishment. We ask Allah for safety and security. But this is ultimately the end goal. This is the, this is the end goal for people who disbelieve. If we look previously, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said about the people of taqwa? After mentioning all of the various different characteristics of the people who are conscious of Allah, he says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ muflihun. Those people are the successful ones. Ultimate success with regards to Allah is Jannah, paradise, success in the Akhirah. Here, what's going to happen to these people? Due to their rejection of the message and rejection of the, the warning, they are going to attain a severe punishment. And we ask Allah for safety and security. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to speak about the next category of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak about this for quite a period of time. And that is the issue of nifaq. So what does Allah say? وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now speaks about the hypocrites. This concept of hypocrisy, nifaq. And the ulama will say that nifaq is basically to show outwardly good, but to have inwardly bad. I mean to not be sincere, a two-faced reality. In inwardly you have one state and outwardly you show a different state. This is effectively what hypocrisy is. This trait, hypocrisy, is the most mentioned uh, blameworthy trait in the entire Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in many passages about um, uh, this concept of hypocrisy. There is even a surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Munafiqun. So it is something which is grave. Okay, it's a grave, grave thing. And what's important to remember is that this concept of hypocrisy is something that will remain until the Day of Judgment. Okay, it's something that will remain until the Day of Judgment. But the important thing to also remember is we cannot judge. We cannot judge whether a person is a hypocrite or not. That is, again, a state of the heart. And it is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decide what happened, you know, or, it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to what is in the hearts of people. But it's important to remember that we cannot judge. And there's a famous story that is mentioned that in the time of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there was a companion by the name of uh, Usama bin Zayd. And Usama bin Zayd, he um, is in battle. And he's in battle and he is in arm-to-arm -arm combat with an enemy of Islam. And he overthrows the enemy of Islam and he has his sword and he's about to... Uh, end the life of this person and that person at that moment remember he's an enemy of Islam he has a sword literally about to fall upon his head and he at that moment he says Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I bear witness that there is no god but Allah and the Muhammad sallallahu is the messenger now some bin Zayd at this moment he's saying well yeah you're only saying that because you know I'm about to kill you now you're an enemy of Islam all your life now you're about to be killed now you're saying this because you, you want to be saved and he kills him. He kills him. Because he feels well, that's not sincere. The matter goes back to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gets angry. He says to Usama bin Zayd, he says, Do you know what was in the heart of that person? What if he was sincere? You assumed that he was a hypocrite. How do you know that he was sincere? How do you know that he was insincere? And in another riwayah, he mentions that that shahada, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, will chase you on the day of judgment. It will chase you on the day of judgment because maybe there was sincerity in there. So we can never judge what is the state of a person, whether they are sincere or not. We can never judge that. That is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is a character trait that a person very easily slips into. That's why Allah mentions it so much in the Quran and asks us to seek ref we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it. Okay? And what is the natija? Well that's not mentioned here. What is the natija of, of um uh, hypocrisy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the munafiqun fit derkil asfali minan that they are in the lowest pits of hellfire. 
the lowest pits of hellfire, such that it will be a state that the people will be in the hellfire and they will see people, okay, maybe speakers, maybe, uh, you know, uh, motivational talk, people who give motivational talks, people who are famous upon social media, etc., whatever. We ask Allah for safety and security. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He enters us all into gentle for those. But there may be people in the day of judgment, in hellfire, and they will notice people even below, like further below in the hellfire, and they will be like, well, how did you guys get there? What were you guys doing? We thought that you were good people. You used to tell us to do good things. And they will say, yes, we told you to do good things, but we never did it ourselves. We gave an outward beautiful outlook, but inwardly we were something else. We ask Allah for safety and security. We ask Allah for safety and security. One of the du'as that the Prophet ﷺ reminds us with regards to this, Allahumma tahhir qalbi min nifaq Oh Allah, purify my heart from nifaq. Very easy du'a. Allahumma tahhir qalbi min nifaq Anyway, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in these verses? He says, وَمِنَ nas And there are some type, some people, مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ Who say that, yeah, we believe in Allah. وَبِلْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And we believe in the last day. وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ But they are not actually believers. They say it, they proclaim it, but actually they're not believers. Because Iman, what is Iman? Iman is what's in the heart. That's what true Iman is. What would we truly believe in? So we might say something. But the reality might be something else. They try to deceive Allah and those who believe. Meaning if you look at the life of the Messenger of Allah, particularly near Medina. Remember, this surah is revealed in Medina. And so in particularly in Medina, we have the fitna of the munafiqun. If you read the seerah, we look at how these people, they try to deceive the Messenger of Allah. They try to cause discord amongst the Muslims. They try to cause um, fitna. They try to spread rumors. They would outwardly try to be in support of the Messenger of Allah, but inwardly they would try to um, cause problems. They were not sincere. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw their machinations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw their plotting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called that out in the Quran. So, Allah They try to deceive Allah and those who believe. They're only actually deceiving themselves. They think that they are trying to, you know, they can deceive others and they will be successful. On the Day of Judgment, everything will be exposed. And that is the most scariest thing. You will be exposed for what you are trying to do. You're trying to hide and trying to plan and plot and think nobody can see you. Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you. He's mentioning all of these characteristics within the Quran. And He will find us out. We ask Allah for safety and security. But they do not realize. They do not realize what they're doing. They're in this kind of trance where they think that they can continue to plot and scheme and cause discord and cause issues. And thinking that, you know, they'll never be caught. They will be caught one day. Fi qulubihim marad. There is a sickness within their heart. There is an illness, a sickness within their heart. That they think that it's acceptable to do something like that. Because remember, we are born on a fitra. We are born on a, a, a purity. So for a person to migrate from that purity to a state of machination and plotting and evil, that's a sickness. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا but due to them remaining upon that, not realizing what they're doing, not realizing that I should, I should be doing this, I should be sincere, and Allah is watching me. But due to them remaining upon that, فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Then Allah only increases them in, in, in more sickness. That they find contentment then in that case. But Allah subhanahu wa knows, وَلَهُمْ أَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Now look at the difference here. Before, it, with regards to the disbelievers, the kuffar, الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَلَهُمْ أَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ For them is a great punishment. Here, وَلَهُمْ أَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ what, uh, For them is a painful punishment. See the difference there. Painful punishment is something that will, you know, Allah is saying, those people, you know, Allah has given you everything. He has given you, you know, all of the best. Then He gives you faith as well. And you still reject. You still are not sincere, but rather, you don't even reject. You try to cause, you know, you try to deceive. You try to plot and plan. And ultimately, this is the plan of the shaitan. That he tries to deceive, he tries to plan, he tries to, you know, make, you know, the reality seem other than that. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that some the three characteristics, the three signs of a, of a munafiq, of a hypocrite, is that when he speaks, he lies. When he makes a promise, he breaks the promise. And when you entrust him with something, he 
have, breaks that trust. Okay, these are the three characteristics. When we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He does not find our characteristics within us. وَلَهُمْ أَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And to them is a painful punishment بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْثِبُونَ Due to what they used to lie about. They're lying. Okay. The final ayah that we mentioned وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ And when it is said to them Do not cause fasad Do not cause fasad upon the earth قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ They say No, no, no. We, we are only people who do good. We are only do people of we are only people of islah. We only are people of you know um, reconciliation and goodness. We don't do that. Allah mufsidun. No, indeed, definitely those people, those people are the mufsidun. yashurun, but they do not realize. Now this concept of fasad, I mean, it is a it is a great grave affair. But ultimately, the issue of fasad is to cause discord amongst people. Whether that might be between husband and wife, between mother and father, between parents and children, between siblings, between friends. This is what fasad is. When you cause discord, disunity and issues amongst people. Okay? And so Allah is saying here, these are the people who they do this. And when it is said to them, don't do this. لا تفسدوا في الأرض. Don't cause this discord amongst people. Don't disunify people. Don't cause issues and problems and and and, and you know make up stories and um, rumors and secrets about people. Don't don't do that. They say innama nahnu muslim. Actually we, we we never do that. Again, it's a sign of the hypocrisy, hypocrisy that they try to show a good reality but inwardly amongst themselves they are plotting and planning in in, in uh, bad ways. And then Allah look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Literally Allah inna hum humul mufsidun. It's literally like saying, No, definitely they, they, they are the people who cause fasad. Like that's how Allah, that's how many times Allah is saying that. You know, to specify, they definitely are. Definitely those people. They try to say something, but in reality, those are the people who cause fasad. But they do not realize. They do not realize what they are doing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes these, these kind of diseases away. So the, the key lessons that we can learn from this portion, number one, that we should become people who humble ourselves to the message. That when we approach the Quran, think about these three faculties, the faculty of the heart, the faculty of the hearing, the faculty of the seeing. Part of also this concept of disbelief for us is that the people who are around us, our neighbors, our work colleagues, all of these people who are non-Muslims, it is incumbent upon us to give them the message. That doesn't necessarily have to be overt, but it can be you know, indirect. The good character that you show, the good behavior that you show, the small tidbits of, of information that you tell them about your religion, this is da'wah. Because remember, da'wah is not to convert people. Da'wah is to just give the message. Just if they accept it, that's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them or not. But your good character, your goodness, such that whatever they see on the TV, whatever whatever some nut jobs do, you know, in, in, in different lands, they will know, no, this brother, uh, this person, Muhammad, he's my work colleague, I know he's actually a good person. Mm -hmm. He's not like them. He's not one of them. Okay? This is what we have to show. But in particular, as far as this verse is concerned about those who have gone too far, that they have totally rejected. And what we take from that is, we don't want to be like that. So we approach the message with our heart, humbling our heart, recognizing that we will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we need this guidance. And then opening our ears, listening, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to us? What does Allah want from me? He created me from just a small clot. And now I'm here. What is my purpose? And once I understand that purpose, what Allah is saying to me, now I need to open my eyes. Where am I going in my life? What am I doing on a daily basis? Am I doing that which is pleasurable to Allah? That's the first point. The second point, the issue of hypocrisy. Never ever judge anybody. We do not know what is in the hearts of people. And we should never ever look down upon anybody with regards to what they are doing. Okay? People might be doing something and we will think, oh, that's such a bad thing what they're doing. But in reality, they could be, you know, we don't know what their state is. A person might look outwardly like they're sinning. Do, do you know that they might be praying at night? They might be seeking Allah's forgiveness at night? 
They might be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you are. And your judging of them is the worst thing. Is eating up your own sins. So we should keep away from that. And this issue of hypocrisy, we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He keeps us sincere. Sincerity is the key to Jannah. We could have huge amass amounts of wealth. It will be thrown all in our face if we were hypo hypocrites. We were not sincere. We were doing it for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we were trying to deceive people. Okay, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. And this issue of facade causing discord amongst people. Those type of people, we need to shun them from our lives. We need to keep them away from our lives because that is the works of the shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for safety and security. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. A reminder of the dua of the Messenger of Allah. Allahumma tahir qalbi min al nifaq. Oh Allah, purify my heart from hypocrisy. Let us learn this and let us make it a regular habit that we recite this. Zakum la khair. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jama'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi.